And I think leadership has, has two, two, two factors. I mean, first, you know, have to, you have to know the vision, what we do today. <laughs> and the second part is then really leadership training, what Sima and Moni, you were in my trainings. <laughs> I hope you enjoy that. Yeah. But really, that's my my biggest biggest motivation raising up the leader, as you say. Thank you very much for this kind introduction. So coming to the revelation of Jesus Christ, I would say it's the most important book. No, probably say it's a really important book, but probably it's a most important book to know how we treat and live as Christians today. But um, uh, there was a lot of confusion too. And when I was young like you, teenager, I was, um, I had a lot of wrong understanding of the revelation and a lot of mis teaching about that. So I was really confused. And actually I don't want to hear too much about the revelation because it was a bit scary about the beasts and all the things. But actually, um, I learned to read the Revelation, and I, I would say it's my most, uh, the book that I love the most. Mm -hmm. Because I saw that's a book of hope, and not a book of fear. And it's mm -hmm. the book that really tells us how we should then live as Christians. And it's also the book that is a direct revelation from Jesus Christ. I mean, the Gospels, there are a lot of stories, and then Jesus said something. But here, Jesus said almost the whole book. There is the introduction and the end. But actually, 96, let's say 96, 7% of the book is really direct from Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so I think it's really, really important to read that or to understand it. And then um, um, the problem is, I mean, God didn't wrote it down. He, he made a film to John, and John wrote it down. And this made give us a bit of confusion, you know? because we have to really understand how John understood it, and how the time that the culture was in this time to understand the symbolics and and this all that we really can understand the message. So when we just take that with our Greek thinking that we have today, our Greek, let's say, academic, scientific, scientific thinking, then probably we will understand the revelation. So make it very easy now. I would say it's very, it's very easy book. It's really easy book. When you have, when, when you understand and take it in, in the way that the Hebrews understood it, it's really not that complicated. Good, so we go not to every details. I will just, just give you the big overview. And when you have questions, then you can ask questions to different uh, specific details or so. Um, but I think the goal is really give a big overview. So the question is, um, where is our understanding of revelation coming from? I would claim here it's coming from Hollywood. Do you know that Hollywood made more than 200 films about the revelation of Jesus Christ? It's amazing, huh? but do they really understood the message? I hesitate. Huh? They they made they made it these um, films because it fits to the current society, and they could reach people and could make money, and therefore they choose the topic. But I really hesitate, highly hesitate that they understood the revelation. But so we all probably saw the films before or so, but here is a trailer of one of, of this film, X-Man. Does somebody of you saw X-Man? No? X-Man? Yeah, one, one, one movie. Well, yeah, there are many movies yeah. about X-Men and, and so, but just give a bit of impression of uh, what I meant. Mm -hmm. It's coming from Hollywood. So. Do you do you have sound? Especially. Uh, can you have sound from Zoom? Do you need to Zoom sound now? 
Control our powers. Then don't. This is war. Everything they built. Got it. And throw the ashes of their world. Got it. Got it. Okay, we are here. And we have a problem with the audio that that's, um, is not working. And so, actually, it's very much more traumatic as we said. <laughs> but um, I hope you get a taste. Okay. I mean, it's the end of the world. And so we did, we did a word cloud with people and asked them what is about the what, what is that is about the, the revelation of Jesus Christ? And so you see the most of the people say the end of the world and the Antichrist uh, and so on and so on. And um, that's that's the assumption that people have. And you saw that in the film, they mentioned the Bible and the four horses of apocalypse and all of these things. They bring always the Bible in. 
and make this connection always about the end of the world. But actually, I believe, or I say, I absolutely, um, I absolutely convinced about that this has nothing to do with the end of the world. <laughs> it's actually a book of hope. And so I try now to convince you about that. So revelation is not about fear, it's about hope. But they create more fear. And for me, it was a lot of fear in my teenage age. And later I just ignored that or ignored the book of Revelation. I ignored that there will be an end of the time. I ignored that everything will collapse. I just enjoyed my time. But actually it was a lot of fear. But actually it's not, it's a book of hope. So the second one, my claim, and then I prove it, of course, Revelation is not about the end time, it's about all time. It has to do with the end time, but also with all of the time and with the time where the Israelites were living in. Revelation is not about confusion, it's about understanding. And the last one, Revelation is the most important book for today that Christians should know. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So, we need to ask worldly question because we are worldly students. We should not first jump in the reading. We should um, go to the worldly question and always is from where do I know what I know? <laughs> uh, this is one of the first questions you have to ask. If you know something, ask the question from both, where do I know um, what I know? And is this really a good source? Is this historical proof? And do I read the Bible in the historical context? So uh, your opinion, it's not so important. My opinion is not so important. <laughs> it's not about opinion. It's about how do you have argument for your opinion or what you are saying? So make sure that you know from where do you know what you know and make sure that you understand the source right and read it in the historical context. Does it, does it is a good or trustworthy source? Also, I mean, when you read a book about revelation, then you have to ask, who is this author? <laughs> Why do I should believe him? Is it really a good source to read? And so you have to study to find out. You cannot just read something, and then think, oh, okay, I know I understand it. So you have to test the sources. And so you have to test myself. So please test me when you are not agree, have your gun, give your opinion, but only when you have arguments. Otherwise, I don't want to hear your opinion. <laughs> but when you have arguments, then please tell it. What do the people in history or others believe and why? So when we don't know what um, John Calvin say about that, or Martin Luther, or Paul, or other people, and we don't know what the anti-right uh, theologian of today, what he say about that. So we have to study, we have to think, look for other sources, and not just have one. What would be the consequences if we believe this or that? It's always the question. So okay, I can believe that, but is this really a biblical Thing, or is this really something that I want? When, say, when, when it's about the collapsing of the world, everything will disappear. Is this really first what, what the Bible is telling us about? When is this really something that I want? And I say, oh, no, I don't want it. <laughs> I really don't want it. I do not believe it, and I don't want it. Because I think the Bible is about life, Jesus Christ is about life and not about death. So, but we have to go to a source, and we have to, to have, um, we have to really read it in the context, look for the trustworthy source, ask the question around. There is a lot of study. Do not just believe what you read. Anyway, you should not read the Bible, you should start to study the Bible. That is a worldview thing. And then you have to ask the worldview question. And in the end, to come to the opinion, to your conclusion, what do I want to believe and why? And so the, the question is that this is, I believe my opinion, but bring the argument. So this is what we are doing here with Revelation. So first of all, we, we, um, 
we have to understand that the Bible is not always written in the same language, or there are history. And history, we not always can say, okay, what's happening in history, I do the same. Or it's a, um, it's a um, Judah, Judah went and hanged himself, or it's in the Bible. But does it, does it mean that we should do that as well? No, of course not. Or, then history is just what happened, <laughs> but it is not telling you it's good or right. And there is a lot of history in the Bible. So this is it's called prosa. There are facts, history, um, uh, literally understanding, and so on. And there are dates, and, and so and there are two, and you can believe it or not, but this is, this is, uh, these are stories who somebody wrote down with their observation or so, but this is called prosa. Yes. Prose, but but a lot in, in the Bible is not prose. It's, it's, we call them poetry. That's my parable of Jesus Christ. He said there are sheep and there are goats. And if there are not sheep and there are not goats. There are people who, who believe in Jesus Christ and there are people who don't believe in Jesus Christ. It's not about the animal. And so, in Jesus Christ as well, he has not a, a, a sword in his mouth. On his down is not a sword. I mean, these are symbols. And when we do not understand these symbols, then probably I assume that you will not understand the Revelation. So we have to see the symbols behind it. So we have to see a Revelation. Also, we, we ask first the question is Revelation more prose or more poetry? So this is not something that is written in the book. We have to find it out, and we have the interpretation of it. So um, what we will go through, and I, I will tell you now what I believe, it has a lot of symbols, or is mostly symbolic. And we have to understand the symbols. If we not understand them, we do not understand, understand um, the whole revelation. So I, I assume here you can be disagreeing with me. But then bring me the argument. I assume that we have to understand it symbolically. You have to understand the symbols, but Jesus Christ through a film that he showed to, to, um, to, to John and what he was on to say with it. That's the same way when we look to the Lord of the Rings and then say, we take it literally exactly that's this. I know the Lord of the Rings is telling us a story. <laughs> And we have to find out the story behind all the symbols that are in Lord of Rings. And so we can, I, I now would um, assume that we should take a Revelation read like this. <clears throat> so there are many numbers in Revelation, and we have to, to, to understand that numbers in the Hebrew language, like, we have a Greek thinking, well, and we go now a bit to a Hebrew thinking, I'm not Hebrew. And so I don't have to ask him, but I try to embrace this position. <laughs> so in Hebrew, they also the, the, the numbers have, have meanings. So let's say there is seven. Seven appears 55 times in 404 verses, and you can count by yourself. That means in every eight verse, there is the number seven. So you can guess already that it has a special meaning. It has a special meaning, or when, when this is, uh, when there's so many times seven, it's not about the number seven. So seven means we heard that, of course you heard that before, that is the fulfillment. God created the day in se uh, the, the world in seven days. On the seventh day, you should have Sabbath, you should rest. Jesus forgave 77 times, or say you should forgive 70 each same time. Or Jesus sent out 70 apostles. Probably they were just 69 or 71. Did Jesus really count that? I don't think so. Because 70 means he sent out a few, a complete few of these. If he had, they went out. So we should not really try to count it, 
counter that is this will, will bring us confusion. So the seven means fulfillment. And so when we start and we read that, then the revelation makes a different sense. So um okay. I have a mixture here. Uh, but what means the number 1260? It's also in Revelation. Yeah, this means 42 months. So three and a half years, the half of seven. You see that? It's not about the 1260 days. That's something that we assume in our Greek thinking. We count everything in one and one, two and so. But sometimes in the Hebrew thinking, one one can eat three and not two is equal to three. So the Hebrews are much more um, symbolically than we in our Greek thinking. So what means the number 144,000 is also in Revelation. This means actually it's also explained in Revelation, therefore it's not a secret, 12 tribes each 12 times and thousand is always when there is a law. So you can also say there are 12 from the 12 tribes and 12 from apostles from the New Testament and thousands, a lot of them um, are in heaven. So it's not about the number 1444 because then this number would be reached like the Jehovah's Witnesses claimed or then when you would be 1,440 and the one more, then you would not be in heaven. I mean, it's, it's really not about that. So we have to understand this, um, this, this, this number. And then I, I would, would, would um, like to see that you read them by yourself, Revelation, and start to read it in this, uh, in this view. So 24 elders, and um, they are 12, part to ask 12 apostles <laughs> explained. I mean, it's not the 24 exactly. It is that, that the full man of the Old Testament of the, the patriarchs and the full man of the New Testament that he presented to the apostles. They are the 24 elders who reign on the throne. And what means the number thousand? It's thousand is just a big number. It's um, when, when you have let's say, she says 70, then it's something that you can count. It's 10 times. When it's 100, it's a bit more. But when it's 1,000, then you cannot count it anymore. But it's not about 1,000 years, like some claim in, with the millennium, or it's 1,000 years, probably you heard that, and they, they start to think, and in the in, when it was the year 2000, they believed that Jesus Christ will come back, and the, whole um, electronic thing collapse and I mean that's that, that's stupid to think like this because we even don't have the right calculation when Jesus was born. <laughs> so how can we then count the thousand years and all of that it makes it really really difficult to find the time or so I mean the thousand years means just a long time and we cannot count that it will be long 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 time. So, and then um, there is the number 666, what, what probably you heard, it, it's called the Antichrist, um, but actually Antichrist is, net, is not in Revelation, but the Antichrist is in the letter of Paul explained what it is. And it's, it's curious that John, I believe it is the same John who wrote the letters in Revelation. Why he used it in John, but not in Revelation, because it's, I think it's not about that. So three as a symbol of evil, um, six is not seven, or he presents himself as God, but it's not complete. It's just six, three times six, six, six can be the symbol of, of devil, or as well, he can represent to Nero, the, the Hebrews, the, when we do the Hebrew calculation with Nero, and, and I will not go with that, and you can also find out that the is the name of Nero in this time. But I think it's referred actually to 666 as just the evil who want, want to, to um, blame us or want to deceive us. So um, last one, you can also say, um, I mean, it's for the Christian. It was not for the, for the Jewish in, in this time because Trinity 
became a doctrine uh, in the fourth century and not the first one, but three uh, and four are seven, that means Trinity, God, and the creation are the completeness. So, but we have to learn to think in symbols. And there are many, many other numbers. I will not go in all of that because of the time, but to, to, to learn that the Hebrews numbers have an understanding. And when they talk in numbers, they don't think in a Greek, in a Greek way, calculate one and one, they think symbolically. So let's go to the historical context. The book was written by John. Um, actually, you can debate which John it was. That is not part of my teaching. Mm -hmm. The Jewish waited for the Messiah, the kingdom of God. That's um, in the beginning when Jesus came, it was the worldview of the Jewish people. They didn't want to go to heaven or something like this. I mean, they believed that God will restore the Jerusalem and will restore Israel and will defend, defeat all the enemies. So that was the, the idea, that was the understanding of the Jewish in this time, the kingdom of God will come and, and deliver us from the Roman Empire. But it came differently, as they saw. He came just as a normal man. He didn't came as a big king um, on a horse and in paths. He, he came as a, as a little baby in a, by normal people. Um, he hanged around with farmers and with shepherds and, and so on. So this was a confusion already. And then the shock came even bigger. He died on the cross. So Jesus found some disciples, they followed him. The, these Hebrews who had this understanding, they followed him, but they were shocked because it ended on the cross. They saw everything is old. Or we followed something. Yeah, we, we believed him, but now he died on the cross, and this was really um, weird for, for them, and they were shocked. Even it was revealed before in the Old Testament that this would happen, but this was really a shock. But then he resurrected, and, and this was also revealed before that he will resurrect it not so often in the Old Testament. But the confusion came even bigger. He disappeared again. <laughs> it uh, wasn't revealed before. There is no Old Testament sketch who would refer to that. So what? I mean, okay, for me, confusing resurrection and so, but okay. But then he's, he disappeared again. And this was really a big confusion. And you can see that in, in, the, in the letters, when you read the letters of the New Testament, that this confusion came up again and again. And more confusion, it didn't come back after 35 and uh, to 63 years, or it's, it's the span of when Revelation was written. So, but of course it was written um, 35 years after, but probably later. But you can also read that in the, in, the, in the New Testament, in the letters. I mean, they expect that Jesus Christ is coming back in their left lifetime, but it didn't happen. And people already died. So what happened with the people who have already died? Is there a resurrection as well for them? And what, what happened with people who died already 30 years and lie in the floor and their whole body is destroyed? Are, are, do they have resurrection? And this was a big confusion for them um, that he didn't come back. And even more, instead of fleeing, there were persecution. And mainly it started, in this time, it started the persecution from the Roman Empire. Before there was persecution from the Jewish, from, from the Jewish, but not from the Romans. But then with Nero, it started um, with, with, um, in 64 with, with the persecution from the Romans. And so, I mean, we thought he will deliver us from the Romans. Okay. And now he disappeared. He's not coming back. And even more. The Romans take us out, they persecute us. Uh, can you imagine this situation? This is the situation of, of Revelation. 
But then is the question of how can the church know it in all this insecurity, in all this danger and all this um, and, and this chaos. So the Greek work Apocalypse is, is, is we have to understand what this means. So it says, let, let's say, um, Christian, you have a house. And behind your house, there is a tree. Is it true? There is a tree behind your house. Well, and I tell you, under the house, under the tree, there is a treasure. Mm -hmm. Treasure full of gold. Do you believe it? No, no. no. But see, that's a revelation. You never, you, you had no clue about it, that there is a treasure under your tree. That's mm -hmm. not true. Uh, so you can look probably there. Mm -hmm. No, you had no clue. And somebody's coming and say there is a treasure on the tree. And so when this is really true, then your life will change. You life will you will go and dig and try to find there are one million, one million dollars, or I don't know. You will go and find it though. That is a revelation. So revelation means you understand something that you didn't understand before. And you had no clue about it. And you there is a and it's like a new thing is coming to you. Also, the direct um, translation is made known, made visible to all concerning things before unknown, or it is not in future time. It's, it's not written in a future tense. It's written in present. So actually, it has nothing, apocalypse has nothing to do with the future. It has to do that. God wants to reveal something to you that you didn't know before. And so we will now find out what it is that the people didn't know before and now get new re revelation about it. So let's start with Revelation 1 to 3. Somebody probably can read that for me. Moni, can you read it? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all this, all the of all things he that he saw. Blessed is he that he read here the words of his of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. For the time is at hand. So yeah, you already see it's old. What we will look at as a, shortly, it it's, appears eight times in Revelation, four times in the introduction, and four times in the end. Uh, does it want to say something? I think it was. And shortly means pachos, the Greek word, is a brief space. It has quickly, shortly, speedily, as it means it's Come shortly. It's here. It's already here. It's not say it's in future. And because it's eight times, I think it, it what to say or something. It will happen soon. It will not happen in two thousand. So Revelation is not is written a thousand nine hundred years before, and the, the event uh, uh, emphasis is soon. So the next we have to read hear the word of his prophecy and keep it. So when we have to keep it, then we have to understand it. Or when we say that's a confusion, I do not understand the book. So how can you keep something that you not, not can understand? So you can read and hear it, and then you should understand it, and therefore you can keep it. So the book is not about confusion, it's about understanding. So we should understand the book. And then the, the third one, um, uh, or the next one, we don't necessarily have to take the revelation literally. So I already say that. And we have a, to understand that there is a lot of numbers. Um, we have to understand the situation of the church in this time. And we have to understand if otherwise we cannot obey. And the fifth point, it is something that the church at this time didn't know before, but now that's to be real. So I would say starting in the little introduction, these five points we take now 
um, for, for studying the for this thing. Just a summary of what, what I already said. So now coming to the point. It's still the introduction on the point. Why and um, what God is now revealing or what Jesus Christ is now revealing to us or let's say to them in this time, the church, what they didn't know before. This is the secret of the book. So here, um, can you read that again? And from Jesus, the Messiah, the witness, the faithful one, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. Yeah. So also it's from Messiah, the faithful one, the firstborn raised from the dead. He is the king, the king. He is over the king of the earth. He's the ruler over the king of the earth. So of which kings he is ruling? Is it Nero and Caesar? Which kings? Yes. We. we. We have to answer. That's we. So can you read the next verse? To the one who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us a kingdom. Priests for his God and Father be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. So, yeah. We, we are the king. And through his blood, he made us free to become king and priests. You see, here in this translation, it says kingdoms, priests of his, made us a kingdom, priest of his God. But actually, in the original Greek text, it means he made us king and priests. So this is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. We are the kings. And he gave us the priesthood and the kingship back. So priests, we the Christians are, are these kings. He freed us of blood, um, the king's priest. To be kings is Parsileus, is, in, is the Greek word there. And he gave us the kingship back. So the rulership over the mandate that he gave us by the creation. And through the creations or through the fall, and um, this was no more so clear. And now he gave it back to us, the kingship over the whole world. That's that's the revelation. So and then priest is here, here, us, and that we are the priesthood of all. So we don't have to go to the priests to go to God. We can go directly to God. We are all priests. And we can all hear God's voice. So what actually he did, he, he read, he with his blood, he made us free that we can be kings, rule of this world, that we can go directly to Jesus Christ, address our, our things, pray to him. We don't need the priests anymore. So this, that's the first, and then the second of what he what um he wants to say or his new revelation. Morning. Look, he is coming in the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. <clears throat> so he is. Amen. Yeah, and this is this. He is coming. Um, this is a verb, a verb, and this is um, as I took it from the dictionary here. I used only in continuously or in the present and imperfect tense. It's not in the future. So he said, it say he is coming or he is coming. And we understood he is coming once in the future. But actually, he it's coming now in the present or even in the imperfect. It's always a constant, continuously coming. Jesus will come and come and come again. So how it's coming through us, through our kitchen. When we bring water to somebody who is thirsty, then we build the kingdom of God. Then his kingdom is coming um, and take this world. It is also not taking about the future to come or to go. It's another thing. It, it can actually mean both. 
and it's 33 times in Revelation. So this coming, it's coming, it's soon coming. It's here, it's under us, it's in the middle of us. Yeah, this is this is um this is the the introduction of, of, of Revelation, who tells us that um what Jesus Christ revealed to us. So we need now uh, uh, we need now to, to have an interpretation of that. So my interpretation would be that I have this from Bishop Mangavari, and they say we don't have to wait until Jesus Christ is coming back. We are the one who should build the kingdom of God. And of course, we cannot do it 100 percent We cannot do 100 percent because evil is still there. So actually, what Bishop Mangavari say, we living in a in a parallel millennium. <laughs> There is the, the kingdom of the devil is growing, or the kingdom of God is growing, and there is a fight, and the fight between these two kingdoms. But we should not give up. We are because we are on the winner side, <coughs> and, and and this is what Jesus re revealed to them. Don't wait until Jesus Christ is coming back, because he's constantly coming back to build his kingdom. And he is building his kingdom through you because you are you are made free through the cross with his blood to become kings, rulers. And we see that later as well. Rulers who have authority in the world. But the problem is that there is a fight and the church had this crash with the Roman <coughs> Empire and this persecution from the Roman Empire. So this is what revelation, that is the new revelation. The, 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 the new revelation that is um, that is was given to them. Jesus, they they didn't understand that before, waited for Jesus coming back in their time, and Jesus said, No, no, don't wait. Build my kingdom. You and all authority is given to you. Once I will come and take all evil away, of course. This will be a time within this later. But we don't have to wait. We have to build this kingdom because we are we have the authority and responsibility to build this kingdom. And there is always the question: how much can I build this kingdom and, and how much he is helping? We know that from Genesis 2, and there was no bushes because there was there were no man who, who dig the ground and there were no rain. We need both. We cannot do it alone. My next would be humanity, uh, humanism, or just think we can do everything alone. We need not. So we need fully God and we need fully our word and both together. But we are not waiting for Jesus to come back. We are in eternity building the, the, the kingdom for him. So, good. So then, um, nice to hear these stories, but then coming to the brutal facts. So the church is in persecution, and you know it starts now with the seven letters to the church. Um, do, do you want to read money again? Don't be afraid of what you are going to suffer. Look, the devil is going to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested. For 10 days, you will undergo suffering. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the victor's crown of life. Let everyone listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will never be hurt by the second death. So, yeah, I mean, this is so important. I mean, see, we will have life when we not give up. They will probably put you in prison. There will be persecution. That's the good fact. If you only say, come to us, the church is it's nice and you have everything in the church, but then you will collapse because sometimes there are not everything in the church. And there are quarrelings. It's not everything fine. But here Jesus Christ gives us the brutal facts. Say no, it will be like this. Because evil is still in the world and is fighting against, against the good. And there will be a spiritual fight that we do not see, but it's happening. And we we, we, we live in the consequences, but do not give up. Do not give up. Then the second death will no, not hurt you. 
you will probably die, even die. But the second death, if you are related to that, will not hurt you. So this was then the teaching to the church that there's not a church. Just hold on to what you have until I come. To the person who conquer, conquers and continues to do what I have commanded to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter, shattering them like clay pots. Just as I have received authority from the Father, I will also give him morning star. Let everyone listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Yeah, the same message. All authority is given to you. The one with the morning star, who is that? Jesus Christ. And now he gave you the scepter. Jesus Christ gave you the scepter, made you king, and you should be king and rule the earth. Don't give up. But don't rule by sword. By the sword. Don't rule by the sword. Rule by law. Rule by, rule by forgiveness. Take authority and bring goods in, in, in the world. But this is what the spirit of the church says. When we look to Revelation 7, it's very important. So our, our SBS guys, they made it up like this, that there are seven times seven, or seven times are seven acts. So first seven letters, then seven seals, and seven trumpets, and seven signs, and seven bowls, and seven acts, and seven stories. But this is not historically built. So actually, it tells us the same story again and again. First with the churches, then with the seals, then the trumpets, then again, again, again. And the story is easy. Um, I mean, in the beginning, um, as in the beginning, it was good, but there was then persecution, suffering, but in the end, God is good. <laughs> overcome, will, the one who overcome will set on the throne in the first, first series. The second one is, and there is really a lot of things going on. You see, the whole world will collapse, but then there will be silent in heaven. The, by the second one, um, you can also see that and then the kingdom of God became the kingdom of the world. And so on, and so on. So the story is, is, is always like this. Um, it starts, and then persecution is coming, but at the end, Jesus Christ, don't give up. That's the message. You, you should not give up, because um, Jesus Christ is the winner. So um, here in Revelation 5, 9 to 10, that's would fit here in the in the, in the seals or can you read that as well? They sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slaughtered. With your blood you purchased people for God from every tribe, language, people and nation. You made them a king and priest for our God, and they will reign <coughs> on the earth. So this is now taken out of another translation, and therefore it says king and priest. But it's the same. Huh? I mean, he, he fed us through his blood, made us king and priest for our God. We have all authority, because he is the one who can do that. He is the one who has slaughtered, and he is the one who can give us the authority. So, and then we're coming to the to the first seal, to, to this seal. Um, as a first one. Okay. Then I looked, and there was white horse. Its rider had a bow, and a victor's crown had been given to him. He went out as a conqueror to conquer. As a, some Christians would say, that's the Antichrist who now wants to conquer the world. Um, I, I would say, absolutely. Not logical, and first we can we can find the reader on the right horse later in the revelation, and it's Jesus Christ. Or but but actually say that's the first seal. Jesus Christ gave us the crown to conquer the world, but not conquer the world with the sword. No, conquer the world with love, with passion, with bringing goods and helping people. But we have all authority. Don't give up, even if people persecute you. 
So he gave us now, this is the beginning where he gave us this Monday, go out. And then the second is coming. Also, that's that's then Jesus is said as a written Roman, but Jesus was on, this, on the fourth. So also, yeah, I already said that. And then next the follow was the red, the black, and the green. And the red brought war, the black and uh, destroyed the economy, and the green brought death. Or and it's coming dramatically. <laughs> but this all we saw in history. Everything happened. No? We cannot promise the Krishna come to us, everything is good. There will be no death anymore. There will we have prosperity and, and there is no war. It is not true. The real world is different. And we have to face the real world. There will be economic disasters. We have not enough for everybody. There will be death. And there will be war. But we do not give up. We are, we are, not, we are on the other side. We are on the winning side. So that's what the revelation wants to say us. So then the sixth, then it's coming more and more. And then the sixth seal. When he opened the sixth seal, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became like a second. The moon, uh, the full moon became like blood and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree shakes its winter. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up and every mountain and island was removed from its place. So when we read that with our Greek thinking, you know, then we think everything is collapsing. You know? This is describing the end of the world. But when we read that in a Hebrew way, then we see that these are pictures from the Old Testament. Here is one from Isaiah. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will give their light. The sun will break, will be the dark at its rising, and the moon will not shed its light. I will punish the world for its evil, and the world uh, and the wicked for their iniquity. I will put an end to the pomp of the arrogant and lay low the pomp of pride of the ruthless. So, to which time does it refer? To the end of the world in 3,000 years after the Zion? No, it referred to this time. It, it is said to the nations and to Israel, hey, God will put an end. So this picture of, of um, darkening the moon and all of that, it's when God will intervene and will punish and will bring it to an end. And he said, pump the arrogant and lay low the trumpet cry of the ruthless. This is when he intervened in a dramatic way. That's, that was what was the symbol, not the collapsing of the world. I have another example here of um, Joel. The earth quakes before them, the, hem the heavens tremble, the sun and moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. Yeah, this referred to when God will judge Israel. And then, <coughs> And the next one, can you read that? The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great, great and awesome day of the Lord comes. So the second time it is referred to the coming of the Messiah. And then the third time, the sun and the moon are darkened and the stars withdraw their shining. And this referred then to the final judgment. <laughs> So, but the picture is always the same. It's in the same book. And you can read that in the context, you will understand it. So, and after the first time, or the, the punishment of this world, the sun was still there, the mountains were still there, the world was still there. So I think you cannot take it literally. It would, it would um, it, it bring your misunderstanding of, of revelation. So you can still be disagreeing with me, but I I cannot see it like this. I try to, to understand it more in a Hebrew context than in a Greek context. And also coming to the New Testament. Just as it was in Noah's time, so it will be in the days of Son of Man. So it's another word to say, okay, it was 
in the day of Noah, he touched the world, but after that, the world was still there. <laughs> All the animals were still there, the trees were still there, the moon was still there. So, but but when you read like this, or uh, our pictures sometimes every every single collapse, and the Bible is telling us that. But I don't think it's so. It's not telling us. It's a question of your worldview. When you have a Greek worldview, look to the Bible in a literally way and read that like you read the structure of a computer, then probably you can assume that. But when you read that in the whole context, it makes no sense anymore. And when you try to understand the Hebrew context, then it looks so different. Next one. Next description. By which the world at the time was deluged with water and destroyed. Now by that same word, um, the present heavens and earth have been reserved for fire and are being kept for the day when ungodly people will be judged and destroyed. Yes, here, here the same. Or <laughs> it refers to Noah, but after Noah, the, 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 the world was still there. So it's such just to use some arguments that I think this assumption that everything will disappear is really not in the Bible. And I don't think that we can read it like this. So people probably can read it like this when they not read it in the context or are not um, try to understand the Hebrew thinking. But I cannot, I cannot do it. I, I really understand it differently. Also, um, the devil, uh, the, uh, God will never leave the creation to the devil. And I think that, that the Christians have more understanding from the world, from, um, from Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood, I don't know. <laughs> Hollywood are doing such film. But Hollywood and, and, and the philosophers in the world then read it from the Bible. And I think that a lot of that Christian, he has so much his philosophy of Plato, of Charles Rousseau, of all of them in our Christianity, instead of really understand the Bible. And I think um, Revelation is one of these people who made the biggest confusion. So when the same trumpet and blue. Oh. When the seventh angel blew his trumpet, there were loud voices in heaven saying, the world's kingdom has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah and he will rule forever and ever. So I don't know. Um, I, that, coming first to the central message, also this is again the same, and then the central message of the revelation. They will wage war against the Lamb. But the Lamb will conquer them, because He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Those who are called, chosen, and faithful are with Him. Also, when that's that's the center, that's the key verse to say, okay, there will be war, there will be persecution, there will be traumatic times and situations, but I will win in the end. And this is what the Revelation wants to say. It's not about this year, this year, that year. I just want to encourage you. See, encourage people means not, hey, you have a good life, you will have a good life, you have that, you have a car, you have a beautiful woman, it's really not that you have this. It's not that. Because the real life is not like this. And often pastors um, promise that. But then they are, they are, um, they, they, they are wondering why, why people do not change. <laughs> but when people assume that everything will be good, they are not prepared for the real life. But I tell you, the real life is not easy. There is persecution. There is uh, people are not agree with you. That you don't have success. You don't have money. And on and on. But don't give up. Jesus will win. Do you believe that? That's the encouragement. So the, the, the revelation wants to prepare us for the real life. It wants to give us the tools that we can survive in our time. And, and this is the hope, that we can hope that there will, will, will be a good time. And sometimes you have a good time as Christians, but sometimes not. It's always a bit like this. So, but never give up. This is, you see, the, 
it says in in a, in business world that uh, um, eight of ten, David, you will fall, you will fail. Eight of ten, eight of ten times. So, and the one who succeeds is the one to not give up. The ninth, tenth. But but see, when we always want to have success, we never have success. We never have success because success. We are not responsible for the success. We are responsible. For or for going the right direction to God. And so this is the real life. I tell you the truth. When you believe everything is good, everything is okay, you will not go far, I tell you. But you will go far if you are believing and always stand up again. Forgive, stand up again. Forgive, stand up again. So that's, that was revelation wants, wants to tell us that we are now, this king, have all authority and we should not give up when people tell us it is good and, um, and so on and so on. Should we do a five minutes break? Is it okay? Yes, yes. Then you can ask a five minutes break. Mm -hmm. Then let's have a five minutes break for the toilet and then I will believe Revelation is a book of hope. It's a book who want to prepare us for life. We want to give us hope for life. Let's give us the understanding. Don't wait and do nothing. You are a king. You have all the authority. You can uh, you can now go and build the kingdom of God. But it's not so easy. <laughs> because the devil is also there. And he is building his kingdom. And there is a fight going on against good and evil. And therefore there is persecution, war, hunger. And not enough, enough money at all, but don't give up. And the one who don't give up will the one be the one who has success. It's the same in business. The one who the one who didn't give up, he will succeed in business. And it's 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 to say that's that's a natural law. <laughs> don't give up. The one who believes who don't give up will go on, will succeed. So this is this is um, these are the brutal facts from Jesus Christ giving new revelation to the church and say don't give up even you are in this time. Everything what you do has eternal values. Let's go on now to Mark. And um, we know probably about the mark that is on the forehead. Um money is my real say do not harm the, the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God and their foreheads. So we, we, we know about when you have the seal you cannot buy anymore and so we, we know these stories so or probably all of you heard that before. So but here God used the seal and God is sealing us and the things that's coming in all the revelations this bad thing will not touch us will not harm the people who have the seal of God. So what's the seal of God? What is it? Is it the seal? It's tap. Or what? No, what, what is it? Holy Spirit? Yeah, you can say the Holy Spirit. Um, question is, what is the Holy Spirit? But I think for everybody who wants to believe in Jesus Christ and follow him, <laughs> has the seal. Um, and has the Holy Spirit, of course. But I think that, that everybody can have to see when you commit to follow Jesus Christ. And there, we will not be part of all the things that happen in Revelation. So next verse. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant of, or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God in their foreheads. So uh, who should they punish? The one who don't have the seal of God. And then we can read that here. And if anyone would harm them, fire pours from, the, from their mouth and consumes their foes. If anyone would harm them, this is how he is doomed to be killed. Yeah, also, <coughs> actually, you saw that's not, not verse by verse. So I took the verse 
about the sign of the revelation. So, of course, we have to read it in, in the whole context. But here again, also when somebody would hurt you, then fire is coming and consume. So God is protecting you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Nothing can harm you. When you have no money, when you have no success, when you have uh, no, no reputation, I don't know. Nothing can harm you. It's like Jesus on the cross. Nothing could harm him. They punished him. They shamed him. They put him a crown on the bed and, and, and so on. But nothing could harm him because he was free. He was absolutely free. And he knows that God is protecting him. And he received the crown. And he became the king of kings. So actually, that is all the promise from him. So you can know nothing can harm you. I heard a story from, from, from somebody then in the Second World War in this, in this concentration camp. And Dr. Frank, he, 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 um, he survived the camp. And then they interviewed him why he's, uh, what was his secret, why he survived and so many others now. And he said, I never gave up. Every day I believed the day will come. The new day will come. Once the day will come. I never gave up and I, I looked for humor in, in such situation. And I took it not so took myself not so serious. And I know the day is coming. And this is great. And this is great. He, he suffered so many punishments. And he was in this concentration camp. But he survived because he never gave up. So that is the promise. So next one. So the first angel went and poured bowl of uh, bowl on the earth. A horrible, painful sore appeared on the people with people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped the image. So what you have to fear is when you not have the mark of the, from the beast, and then you not have the mark from Jesus Christ, then you have the mark of the beast. Do you see that? So when we are afraid, Christians, of um, ah, when we have the mark, we cannot buy anything anymore, or or all of these things that sometimes you hear. No, I mean there are two marks. One is from Jesus Christ, and the one have the mark who decide to follow Jesus Christ, and there is a mark of the beast from all who don't want to follow Jesus Christ, and this is the mark of the beast, and. The punishment is for them and not for, for the one who has the mark, mark of Jesus Christ. So, and uh, another story, and I take some stories out, and you know, I cannot take everything, but the dragon and the beast also was a very confusing story. Um, there is a woman with 12 stars and she was pregnant. So the description here is, it is the church. Who is pregnant? There are two women in Revelation, a good one and a bad one. So one uh, is, the, is a prostitute and one is the good one. And this is also to Galatians 4, 24 to 26. Um, with this prostitution, also there is the Sarah and the Haggai. One is the good, one is the bad. So we don't have to be confused when we read this a woman. <laughs> One time it's a good and one time it's a bad woman. So, but here it's a good woman. It represents the, the church, 12 stars. What could be 12 stars? Remember? 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. 12, tribes or... 12 tribes, exactly, or, or 12, 12 apostles 12 here. Stars. So they have now the stars. This means the church. So the woman is, is the one who has 12 stars in the hand and receives the baby. So the dragon wants to devour the son that she received, and this is the church, or as a as the one who rules the nation. It's saying, so who who is ruling the nation? We are ruling the nation. So actually, the dragon of the, the church gives birth to a son, representing that's we who should rule the world, and the dragon is coming and want to devour his son. So the dragon was kicked out on the earth 
and this is the serpent. Also, there was a kick out in the beginning of creation, when exactly it happened, I don't know. But actually, it was kicked out, then he appeared as a serpent in the garden. And from this time, he started to deceive the world. But our brothers conquered the dragon. The believers overcome the dragon. How? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. We deceived the dragon. The dragon is still there and, and doing some fights, and we have to face the consequences. But actually, he, he, he is overcome. Jesus crashed the dragon down. Does it was it say? He crashed and he took the lost enemy who is dead. He took away. So there are two beasts, and one beast represents the secular world, the other beast <coughs> represents the church of the secular world, like Nero in this time, who want to create people and deceive people. But he also say, like in a lot of um, letters in the New Testament, that there are also wrong prophets from the church itself who want um, to deceive the church. And this is also the Antichrist is actually one described coming from the church who want to deceive and claim that Jesus Christ was not, um, was not out of um, flesh and bones. So you can find this uh, Antichrist story and definitions in uh, the first and the first letter of John and the third letter of John. Um, and there are six uh, beasts in Revelation for good ones and two bad ones. And also it should not confuse, not every beast is a bad one. And Luther also translated it differently. Uh, so the four beasts are man as crown of creation. It's this, this description from the Old Testament, here from uh, Ezekiel. As the lion, the king of the animals, the eagle is the king of the birds, and the ox is the head of the livestock. And of course, the man is the crown of creation. So this is, these are the represented, as a, he's, actually, he'd be, these four beasts represent, or the four animals represent the creation. God's creation. I'm just another definition. So there are good and evil in the revelation, and always we see this fight between the good and the evil, and there are people on the good side, people on the right side, there are beasts on the good side, there are beasts on the, on the other side. So and, and all, one thing is Jerusalem is the symbol of the good city, and Babylon is the symbol of the bad. I mean, there are a lot of symbols in it, but we should not see Jerusalem as the Jerusalem and or Babylon as dead Babylon. So Babylon represented the evil and Jerusalem represented it. So a lot of, of, um, of, of symbols and probably you have more questions about more symbols than please let me know. But let us go now to one um, difficult chapter and this is the millennium. I think the millennium brought a lot of confusion. So, and million, this millennium is actually only described in Revelation 20 and the whole Bible. So I thought it's really good that we, we take a bit deeper into it. Can you read that, please? Mm -hmm. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key to the bottom of the sea with a large chain in his hand. He captured the, the dragon and ancient uh, serpent, also known as the devil and Satan, and tied him up for a thousand years. He threw him into the bottomless pit, locked him and sealed it over him to keep him for deceiving, uh, from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were over. After that, he must be set free for a little while. Also, okay. An ancient serpent is what? The one in the garden. Mm -hmm. And he is the devil and Satan. And, tied, and now he tied him up for a thousand years. When does it happen? When did 
Jesus Christ, oh God, that I did not put on you. We can go back into to, to, to the gospel zone. Jesus crushed the devil. It was the end of the devil. He took his crown. It was, it, it was this tidying up as Jesus died on the cross. Uh, so you can still be disagreeing or just bring you your argument for that. So, and then he, he was sealed up that he can put no more deceived nations for thousands of years. So what is up? So I believe, no, yeah, I hope you get it. Huh? I mean, it's the Satan in the garden and then he ruled through the whole testament. But Jesus Christ came, died on the cross and he crossed and he crushed the dragon, he crushed the serpent and he bind him for thousand years. And in these thousand years, he was no more allowed to deceive the nations. And until the thousand years are old. And so a lot of theology may know, I think maybe <coughs> not, you know, they have another understanding. But when you read now the next text, I think everything becomes clear. Also the following text. Then I saw uh, thrones, and those who sat on them were given authority to judge. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or hands. Also here, the mark again, huh? we already, already had that. Also, now they sit on the thrones. What did we read before? Who's sitting on the thrones? Who is sitting on the thrones? These are the 24 elders sitting and have authority over the nation. So the authority is given to them to judge. And I, I then he had something and also saw the souls of those who have been hated because of the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, and this Two, there are two categories, or the one who's sitting on the throne and the one who are inside, uh, be, beheaded because of the testimony. And th these are the one who didn't receive the mark. If they didn't um, follow the, the devil, they didn't follow the Batsy, they followed Jesus Christ or followed God in the Old Testament. Now the next text, they came back to life and ruled with the Messiah for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years were over. This is the first resurrection. Okay, now, so I, I don't know if you ever heard a teaching about, about the millennium, but I, 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 I heard so many confusions. And I, I also, there are books about the millennium, when the millennium will happen, and the whole story about Jesus coming back and rapture and all of that. Um, but look here closely. Also, they came back to life and ruled with the Messiah for thousand years. So when did they come back? Who is that? This is the first resurrection. What is the first resurrection? So when there is a first resurrection and, and we read about the second death here in Revelation, I mean that the first resurrection there has to be a second res resurrection. And then, and then it says about the second death, it has to be a first death. So what is it? What is the first resurrection? I think it's the uh, resurrection of the um, people who die who die with uh, Christ, the believer of Christ who will uh, resurrect it to to be in life again with Christ, close to Christ. Mm, I don't think so, but then yes, okay. What do you want to say? 
Uh, I wanted to say two things. One is uh, maybe the resurrection of the spirit when we become Christ. Christian? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing I was thinking was what's happening when Jesus died. There were also empty graves for people mm -hmm. again. Yeah. No, oh, thank you. Also, I, I believe it makes sense when you see it like this. So the first resurrection, and it also Paul described about that in Corinthians. So the first resurrection is the spiritual resurrection. Also, when we decide to follow Christ, we are a new human. <laughs> we are resurrected out of this dead or, or out of this marked people from the devil who will receive the punishment to, the, to decide of the people who can't conquer the world, who, who do not suffer, who can overcome even there is persecution because we have eternal life. <coughs> but there is a, the, the, we all face death. We all will face physical death. But the first resurrection is the one who is in our, our spirit that we commit, that we Let's say the first resurrection is that when you change direction and now walk according to Jesus and no more according to myself to the world. The first resurrection, and this makes absolutely sense. It fits together with that this is the first resurrection. It means that everybody who accepts Jesus Christ will live there. He rule with the Messiah for the thousand years. And it fits together with all the things that we heard before in Revelation. So we see this one has to give authority over the nations. They are already resurrected. So you can see now the next one. How blessed and holy are those who participate in the first resurrection? <clears throat> the second death has no power over them. Yeah, so here it's clear, or right? it's the first resurrection and the second death. So it means, means that there will be a, a, a second death. Also, the first death is what? The first death is what? It's a spiritual death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's when we are all spiritual dead. Mm -hmm. This is what the Bible says. Because we, 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 we cannot do the good thing, but through this Jesus Christ, to accept Jesus, follow his way, we have the first resurrection. <laughs> and then... And, 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 and then, the, but the second death is then the physical death zone. But we don't have to, to fear it because we have the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. So for me, this makes sense. It will not say, like, when people say, okay, now we live in them, and then Jesus will come. Uh, we will get raptured, and then a thousand years, millennium, and then Jesus will come back and take us up again, and there will be a promise for us in heaven, and there will be a promise for the Jewish Jewish people in, in, in Israel. I, I I cannot see that. For me, this makes no sense. For me, when this book is really a book of hope, then it will give us hope, give us hope for eternity, that we are prepared for facing the challenges in the world. And because we are the one who can challenge, and we can face this challenge, we are the ones who will succeed. Not the one who succeeds, who wants to succeed. No, the one who, who, who <coughs> overcome will succeed. So yeah, when, when, we, when, when, when something happens and all people are shaking, and you will be the one who has hope, you will be the one who lead in the situation. You are the one who brings people perfect. You are not the one who gets deceived from everything around, and then something is not okay, then you are. There is no God. Ah, you're not giving up. You know, he's always there. But the reality is also there because the evil is fighting against us. But this gives us an advantage to all the others who don't, don't know Jesus. We are have a hope and we are not giving up. Even brutal things happen to us. And this made us the one who can queer in the end, who will be in the end. This was the material diet that they didn't define. They concluded with love. And in the end, the Roman Empire gave up. And, and if the Roman Empire and accepted the Christian religions and made this as a state religious in the end. But 
This is concrete. But they do not just die. They live for eternity. And they will see that they're, what they did, they're, they're conquering until the death that it has its own value. And in resurrection, they will, they will see it. And they believed in it. And I think this is, this is what, what, what Revelation wants to do with us. Give us hope. Prepare us for this world. And therefore, we are the one who conquer. We are the one who succeed. We are the one who not give up. And because um, we have this promise, when you don't have Jesus Christ, then <clears throat> when, when life is hard, then what do you do? What do we do? And life is really punishing you. Yes, Christian. Um, I'm a little confused because I, 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 I believe to, to my position uh, all, during all my life. And um, now what I can understand is that we, um, we have cast now, we have Jesus cast in our love now, but we, we are, um, um, we can um, feel, uh, evil uh, uh, some okay. uh -huh. and um, <clears throat> um, the power of evil is uh, no destroyed everything is no destroyed into us I don't know if it, I, I, it makes sense what I'm saying yeah. we can feel some um, yeah, of course. Evil, of course. Cool, evil uh, into it's us. Yeah. And why? <laughs> yeah, but if a second, uh, second die doesn't have power um, Man. Over, over, over us, what we still are uh, feeling there's a... Yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. that's a good question. Because uh, we, we think in a Greek way. <laughs> but... but but the, the, the pain is still there because the devil is still there. So I, I, I say now, <clears throat> interpretation for me, I don't have it from the Bible, but what makes logical sense for me. I would say, when God would punish now everything, then he will destroy the Lord. But he wants to reach people. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he not punish now. He will wait until these people who will want to find Jesus Christ, can find Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the reason why we are suffering and he is not doing it right now. Because when he would do that and you don't feel afraid or you don't feel bad anymore, then he is to wake up with everything. The evil world. But this is not the time now. That's not the time. And I think it's not the time because um, he wanted more people can find Jesus Christ. Therefore, it's not. But probably I'm wrong, but I know it's not in my hand when Jesus Christ is really coming back and the, 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 the marriage between the church and him will happen. I don't know when it is exactly or And then he will destroy evil, absolutely. I mean, this is not the time. I mean, I can go thousand years, but what I know is it's the, his, that's reality, evil is here, evil is in me. I have bad thoughts. I have to fight against them, but I will not give up. I will always stand up for him because I have hope. And I have forgiveness, very important. No? When you don't have forgiveness, so what do you do with your shame? What do you do with, with your mistakes? You try to hide them, but when you have they cross, I understand, and you can also forgive, forgive yourself. So I think that's sometimes the biggest enemy, forgiving yourself. But this, you can forgive yourself because you have the cross. But evil is still here. And I think the revelation gives us a tool how to handle with evil, how to come <coughs> to bring reformation, how we are coming people who bring hope and bring change. And it's only the people who are not giving up. When you are not prepared and just look for the good, 
you you will not you will not succeed. You will not give up. So it, and this is um, I mean I think this is the message. I hope I answer a bit your question. I don't know everything. I don't I don't know when Jesus comes. <clears throat> evil is absolutely coming. Mm. But I know we constantly bring healing and heal and fight for them. Yeah. Mm. And so the, the last, um, just uh, the devil get released after the thousand years in a short time. And then we, we think, okay, the devil get released. And then what's happened? But fire is coming from heaven and then is destroyed. And we see that in, in several parts that it's not that the devil is fighting against God. <laughs> He's not on the same level like God. So when the time is there, the devil will release from prison and then fire is coming from heaven and then it's done. Evil is destroyed. Um, just to uh, see if I understood it right. So um, you are saying you're now in this time of thousand years where the devil is fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But still we can see, feel that yeah. he's somehow uh, existing, but he's still buying. Yes. So uh, like yeah. Vishnu Mangabadi say we, we are living in a parallel millennium. <laughs> or the millennium of the devil and <laughs> the millennium of God. And then there, there is a war. But you are sealed. When you have the seal of God, then the devil is gone for you. He cannot deceive you anymore. But not for the one who are not sealed. You have the seal of the beast. So, but for you is the promise the devil is gone. Or probably you can also say the devil is gone, and but he's his workers are still alive. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I cannot see everything or I don't know everything about the question, but um yeah I, I just believe it's a book of hope and the book wants to prepare us how can we live as Christians today in the world. So Revelation 21, then the final or becoming the final. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. So there is a now that, that it can be a bit confusing here, and probably I cannot answer everything. But a new heaven and a new earth. Also, you can read the next text of one. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and they, there shall be no more death, and neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, and that set and he. That set upon the throne say, Behold, I make all things new. Yeah, so um, we see coming down from heaven, or we already know that it's continuously coming down. So the new territory is not actually, we do not go up, so the new territory and it's coming down will build here. So I will create a new heaven and a new earth. And um, when we go to the new, then we see, oh, okay, it's absolutely new. But here, this Greek word is kainos, <coughs> and this refers to new, especially in freshness. And so it makes it fresh, new. There is an advertising, somebody with a pullover is, is, is in the shop, and then she asks, is this new? And she no, it's it's washed with this kind of <laughs> um, soap. Mm -hmm. And just for advertising, I think it's more like this. Or, um, this is this would fit me more that 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 it means a refreshment or a redeeming. Um, redeem is when somebody's imprisonment he gets redeemed, become free again. So the city is in chains, and then chains are gone, and the city is free. 
yeah, although it, said, it didn't say it's completely new, um, and this is also coming from the Old Testament, actually this new heaven and this new earth. Exactly here you see the scripture. And also in the New Testament, in 3 Peter 3, 13. Also, it's not completely new, and we can go back probably to this one, um, but it is coming down from heaven. So the new Jerusalem is coming down from heaven. The city of Geneva was called the new Jerusalem that will come down from heaven. And they could see the prosperity, they could see the goodness in the city. And a lot of refugees or people came to watch and they brought these ideas back to their home. And this new Jerusalem is coming. But but this coming, and sometimes we see it, but sometimes we do not see it. There is still pain and all of that. But we know that it's coming and in some place we can see it and we can be happy in Geneva and learn from that. But sometimes it's not so easy. But this is the promise. We will succeed. But we, we, we succeed, uh, we win or we learn, or we never lose. <laughs> when we when we not win, then it's okay, then we learn something. Then it's not the time. But in this perspective of God, we don't always have to win. Because we, we know that we have the ultimate and uh, victory. So it's now coming down. And then it's the pre prepared. And, and who is prepared as a bride? I don't for the husband. Who is the bride? Who is the prepared bride? We, we, the church. And Mr. Mount they always, so Revelation is not about the end of the world, it's about when the church is ready for the wedding, <laughs> when the church is prepared for the wedding. So we are pre then is prepared to then get the husband. And who is the husband? Who is the husband? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, of course, the husband. So this is this is then once there will be the marriage. And so it's it's a it's the kingdom of God is yet here, but it's not fully here. And this confuses us much sometimes. So we think either or, but it's not either or. And this is, God has a bigger plan than either or. He always think either or. He has a big plan and he know why he's not coming back and taking all evil away. You can say the same question you can ask, why didn't Jesus came earlier? Why didn't, Je why didn't why Jesus came not by Moses' time? Or by Abraham, why do people have to wait so long? So if you want to know, so they go to see my she did it, TV, yes. <laughs> we go to Timo. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, probably we don't find out the answer. Yes. We don't have it in our hand. But it, it, of course he had something in mind with this. And so we don't know actually about this time. But we can look for this, for this marriage when the church is ready, the bride is ready, and then the marriage with the, with the bride come. And, and then he will take away everything. He will then take away the bad feelings, the evil. He will take away. But so it, it's, we can still take away some, or we can, we can bring healing, but it's not completely right. It's still there. So can you see that revelation is a tension between the good and the bad. It's tension in us. We know the good and we know the bad. And, and we have to live with that. This is, I, I or in Revelation, prepare you for life. That's true. If you think everything is okay in me, then you will fail. When you say, I'm, I'm a good person. No. Okay, you feel good today. <laughs> Tomorrow, you feel not good. What do you do mm -hmm. with that? Or then there's a conflict in your mind so we are not good, but sometimes we feel good and it's okay, we feel good, so, but we should not be <coughs> <laughs> We know we are all sinners and we all forgive us. But when we are down and you know, we have nothing, nobody's listening to me and nobody is um, honoring me, and what do I do here and all these questions, then you cannot, uh, it's okay. I mean, you can feel bad. But Jesus forgave you and want to bring you on. So, but we have to live in this and we have to prepare that this will be normal. 
to feel bad, it's normal. To do mistakes, it's normal. To have not success, it's normal. Mm -hmm. to, to have persecution, is normal. That's normal, but we are the one who never get off. So um, I have, why I have this again? Yeah, that's probably okay. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls of full of the seven last legs came to me and said, come, I will show you the bride, wife of the lamb. He carried me away in the spirit to a large high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down from God of heaven. Yeah, he, he, he could see what is the bride. What is the bride? I show you. He said, Jesus said, I show you the bride. What is the bride? The bride is the church. Church who is coming constantly down for heaven. That's the bride. This makes sense for me. The revelation makes sense for me when I read it like this. So that, this, this is the bride. And so it's the bride is coming down from heaven, get prepared for the wedding. And, and so the, the new Jerusalem is coming down from heaven. And everything what you do, good things that you do, bring water to somebody who's thirsty, you build the kingdom of God. The city of God is, is there. And, and um, I think this gives me hope that I, I can know, hey, he is here, he is in hand, it's under us. Everything what I do has eternal value. When I help somebody over the street, I did something for God. I will the kingdom of God. I bring salvation to the world. I help somebody who, who is in pain. I gave somebody someone food who, who is hungry. I bring salvation. This Conquering means doing salvation. <clears throat> Don't do it with a sword. Don't be the best. When you want to be a leader, then you should be servant. Do the servant attitude. And you you receive more and more this new Jerusalem that will come. And then this can reflect in politics, business, and so on. And so the, the also this society get changed through this biblical principles. But this is our 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 worldview and the, the big thing is just to see this war between the evil and the good one and the, the yet and not yet. And this is the biggest confusion I think for us. We would have to yes or no. <laughs> and we we don't like to have this insecurity of I don't know. But this is exactly when, when you when you always would know then you don't need God anymore, then you can do it by yourself. Also. So you would become absolutely independent from God and you always know. But when you don't know, then sometimes you have to go say, why is this happening? Why why is it like this? <clears throat> and, and, and you need God, you, you go to God, look for answers. And this is this war that is in us that the revelation is describing. So then to the end. The spirit and the bride say, come, let everyone who, hear, who hears this say, come, let everyone who is thirsty, come, let anyone who wants the water of life take it as a gift. Yeah, so the bride we know is the church. <laughs> so the spirit is it's the spirit on the church. We should now go, go to everybody and say, come, come. We have, we have living water, come to us. Let's say calling for evangelism. <laughs> go into the people, call them to come and show them the, 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 the water, the living water. Not go and tell them, I promise you security and promise you wealth and promise you that and all these fancy things. No, because they will not survive, they will not conclude when they have when they come because of that. But then we have to tell them, hey, in every suffering that you go through, God is with you. When you think you're alone, God is, when you think you're alone and there is on a beach, 
is a picture where somebody say, um, yeah, I'm alone because there is only one foot footprint. Mm -hmm. And say, yeah, see, God, I have to walk alone. And they say, no, you didn't have to walk alone. Mm -hmm. I carry you. Because I carry you. <laughs> so you cannot, yeah. even in your biggest, biggest <coughs> day, in your biggest harm, in your deepest moment, you can know God is carrying you, God is with you. And to give this comfort to people, to come, I have what for you, a living what for you. So revelation is, is not just explanation, it's a calling for mission, go. Bring people water. And as well, like, like we heard from, from David McDonald, I mean, kill people in the sense, give them life or take a tumor away. It's salvation. <laughs> give them life. Then you bring the kingdom of God and let them know how, um, like, like Jesus made wonders or and, and healed people. Probably, I never healed someone. Honestly, I conf confess my. Uh, I would like that someone is there, stand up from the wheelchair when I pray. But I don't have to wait for that. I can bring healing <laughs> with my gifts that I have to help people, to serve people, um, to bring salvation to people. So it's actually a, a, a calling for mission, uh, for evangelism. So let's find the things together, creation in the beginning, and the new creation in Revelation. Then God created the garden and God created now the new Jerusalem. That's the same. So God moved in the garden and God will live in the city. Or can you see the parallels of Genesis to Revelation? Man received dominion over creation, man re received kingdom back, or kingship back. Man and wife come, come together, the church married the Lord. Tree of life was not reachable anymore, and now they, they had access to the tree of life. And water was flowing from the garden, now flowing from the throne. So yeah, I can also send you the PowerPoint if you, if you want. But can you see the connection? He wants to restore. <laughs> He restore, you are from healing the story of the fall and want to restore that. And now we are in this process in Stephen, restoring the God, bringing the new Jerusalem, bringing the kingdom of God, which him together as his children are. We are the kings and we have all authority that is given to us. So last, my, my long, ah, yeah, but I think that's the last one. So summary, it's not a book of destruction of the world. It's about hope for the believers. I hope if you are not agree with all the other points, but that you come and believe in that, that this, that this book will really prepare us for the real world. But it's not an idealistic book. It shows the reality, the, the, the war, uh, we stay in. Christians always have hope, even when it does not look great. Everything that we do is not in vain, because we are already building on the kingdom of the church. So for me, that's my biggest revelation in the world. So I, I, nothing is in vain. I'm building on the kingdom of God. What I'm doing has eternal value. This gives me a so another perspective on all my doing that I do daily, if I understood that. We are living in a parallel millennium, the kingdom of God is growing but evil as well. And the final goal is it is the wedding of the bride, the church, and the ultimate destruction of the evil. So I hope this gives you a bit an overview over um, Revelation. There would be a lot more symbols to clarify, and I would not say I'm the absolute expert for all the details, but I'm seeing as an expert of seeing the big picture. I hope it was a blessing for you, and now I give back to you. Thank you, Marco.